Hello and welcome back to your daily dose of .NET. This is the second video in a short series in which we're building a simple calculator app using .NET MAUI, XAML, and the MVVM architecture. In today's video, we're going to be adding the calculator buttons and setting up our colors and styles so that our application can look great in both light mode and dark mode. If you like this type of content and would love to see more, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So, let's jump in. In the previous video, we created a grid with two rows as the base layout for our screen. We placed the calculator's display in the first row and we gave it a height of 200. We'll now fill up the second row with the calculator button grid. To do this, we'll create a nested grid and add a couple of rows and columns. We'll have five rows in total, with each row having a value of star, meaning that it'll take up a fifth of the available space. As for the columns, we'll have four in total, with each column taking up a fourth of the available space. Now that we've set up our grid layout, we can begin adding in our buttons. First, we'll work on the design for the clear button, and then we'll use that to create a style which we can apply to the other buttons. So we'll add a button and set the grid.row and grid.column properties to zero. We'll set the width and height request values to 80, and then we'll set the text value to AC. Here's how it looks on the screen. Let's now tweak the look of the button to better match our target design. From our reference image, we can see that the buttons have a circular shape. We can easily achieve this by setting the corner radius property of our button to a value that's half the width and height value. So we'll set the corner radius value to 40. Next, we can set the font size to 32 and set the font attributes value to bold. As you can see, our button now looks quite similar to the design, but we still need to work on the colors. Working with colors in .NET MAUI is quite easy. We can add custom colors for our design in the colors.xaml file, which you can find in the styles folder under the resources folder. So we'll add several colors, which we're going to need to implement both the light and dark versions of our design. Now that we've added our custom colors, we can come back to our clear button and set its background color to the custom light green color we just added. Then we'll set the text color to black. This looks great in light mode, but if we switch over to dark theme, we'll, we'll see that the colors could use some slight tweaking to make it look better. Fortunately, we can specify a different color for the dark theme by using what's called an app theme binding. This syntax allows us to specify different colors for light theme and dark theme. So if we check our application again, we can see that the color changes depending on the theme selected. We can also apply an app theme binding for the text color property so that it's set to black when the app is in light mode and white for dark mode. With our button looking good, we can now begin creating the other buttons in the grid. However, you'll notice that the buttons have a lot of similar property values. For example, they all have the same values for the width and height, as well as the same corner radius. Also, we can see that the number buttons all have the same background color, while the math operator buttons share a different background color. So to avoid unnecessarily setting these values repeatedly on every button, we are going to create a couple of explicit styles for our buttons. While we could place our styles in the styles.saml file in the resources section, we're going to keep them in this file for simplicity. We'll call our first style the base calculator button style and set its target type to button. This style won't be directly applied to our buttons but will serve as a base for the other styles, which we'll add in a moment. Next, we can begin adding setters for properties. First, we'll add a setter for the width request property, and then for the height request, and also for the text color, font size, and font attribute properties. With our base style in place, we'll now create a style for the number buttons. We'll set the based on properties value to our base calculator button style, which will make it inherit all the values from the base style. Now, we can add a setter for the background color as well as the text color. Finally, we'll add the operator button style, which is very similar to the number button style, but with different values for the colors. Now that we've created our styles, we can remove the properties we've moved over to the styles from our button and set the style property instead. Then, we can copy and paste our button and modify grid.row and grid.column values, as well as the text values to fill up the rest of the grid. Since our clear button has a different background color than the other operator buttons, we can override the style by setting the color directly on the button. Finally, we'll modify the background color of our calculator's display to use an app theme binding and our custom colors. We'll also set the stroke color value to transparent. So, as you can see, 
Our app now looks really good in both light theme and dark theme. In the final video in this series, we'll make additional minor tweaks to the UI and actually implement the calculator functionality using the MVVM architecture. This has been your daily dose of .NET. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.